SoundCloud, Stitcher, iTunes, even on Facebook. There's no excuse not to listen. Swish Edition. Hey, Dale. Hi. <laughs> what, what happened? I wasn't ready, I guess. <laughs> Were you taking a drink? I was. Taking I, thought, a... I thought it was going to be a lot longer than that. It was a short one. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm all right. Good. It's December 1st. All right. Ding, 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 I tell you, I'm excited about Friday for the Mariah Carey special. What? I don't even know about this. How do you not know about this? Let's talk about it after this. The global pop culture phenomenon. Swish edition. We tell and Scott. Coast to coast. Downloaded in 140 countries every week. This is the Swish edition. All over the world they're talking about it. All over the world. Are you ready? Ready. Break it down. Get swishy with it. Swish edition. System activate. To the world. To the world. <laughs> This is the Swish Edition. An international sensation. Downloaded in 140 countries every damn week. The Swish Edition. The Swish Edition. The Swish Edition. You're listening to the Swish Edition. Crazy, right? It's weird. Hallelujah! Holy shit! Where's the Tylenol? I love that. I'm so proud of myself. Really? What it, now? Okay, now tell me, what is this uh, Mariah Carey special that you're talking about? It's a Mariah Carey holiday special on Netflix that premieres on Friday, December fifth. Awesome. Is this something that we might find out if we were uh, a BingeBum.com subscriber? Yes, you would actually. Nice. But what makes this great is that it's just not a Mariah Carey concert. It's Tiffany Haddish. Oh, I love her. Mariah Carey and. Friends. Yeah, I wasn't prepared to talk about this. It just came right. to my head, so I don't know. But there's lots of celebrity guests and singing and all kinds of stuff. Nice. So it drops on uh, this Friday. Friday. Cool. The Christmas season has begun. The Christmas season began Started weeks. Started two weeks ago. <laughs> weeks and weeks ago. We already have a tree up. Uh, it's not really decorated. I think there's four decorations on it. I like the way it is now. What is the, You bought um, a couple of decorations for our tree this year. I bought two Big Bang Theory. Yeah, bazinga. Ornaments, bazinga, and, soft and a kitty. soft kitty. It's very cute. They're very cute. <laughs> and then we have the one your mom gave us yes. that says uh, 2020, the first year in our house. Yeah. And then there's, oh, and then I bought that squirrel. Bought the squirrel. Yeah, got to have a squirrel. <laughs> you don't have a squirrel on your Christmas tree. What the fuck? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> um, Let's see. We've got some breaking news. And tonight on the 6 p.m. news, <laughs> there was a murder at a Walmart. And <laughs> there's always a murder at the Walmart. That's why I don't go to Walmart. How do you like our new breaking news breaking news music? It's interesting. It's long. It's, <laughs> it's maybe too long. It's like an intro to the 6 o'clock news. Listen, I'm not going to be happy until our show is two and a half hours long every week. <laughs> mm-hmm. I ain't doing that. All with uh, <laughs> my buttons. You can do what Joe Scarborough does. What's that? And basically does the first two hours. All right. And then he goes to his bunker and leaves Mika and what's-his-face out on the floor. Right. Oh, does he leave at some point? Have you not watched it? No, well, we have... We well, I tell you what, I haven't we watched a- it in a long time, but he used to go... He used to do one or two hours and then go sit in the control room. Right. Because he would chime in every once in a while. That's right. I, yeah, I didn't even notice that. Mm-hmm. We've never watched the show from beginning to end. We tend to turn it on if we get up really, really early, and it's before our beloved CBS morning news comes on. Oh, Gail. Yeah. And you know who's making a comeback? Well, I don't know if it's a comeback or not, but it's you not. know who's making appearances? is Charlie Rose. Oh, oh, <clears throat> has he resurfaced? He has, and I don't know where um a long time ago i had followed him on instagram yeah. and of course he went silent <laughs> and he's posted a couple things and there were interviews so i don't know i don't know what's going on with him i always liked him i loved his uh <clears throat> you know round wood table it, conversations <laughs> with people yeah and i really liked him on cbs um this morning 
that the name of it? CBS yes. This Morning. Because uh, he is the original one who kicked it off with uh, Gail and Nora, right? Right. And it, it kind of sucked that he went down the way he did, kind of like Matt Lauer. Oh, it, was um, hor- it was horrible. Yeah. I, mean, I think it was because I liked him a lot. But, yeah. I mean, you had to do what you got to do. Yeah, if you're being a bad, 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 bad guy. I mean, you know? if it was anyone else in that position, it was an HR issue, you would have been fired. All right, exactly. And he was. He was. So uh, the reason I played the breaking news um, music is because breaking just today. The mysterious 10-foot-tall metal monolith that was in the middle of Utah's Red Rocks Desert uh, that, I think it was about two weeks ago that they found this, Yeah, right? Uh, You guys heard about this. Um, The Bureau of Land Management found it, and they said, we have no idea where it came from. It's 10 feet tall. It's metal. And all of a sudden, this past Friday, sometime between Friday night and Saturday morning, it disappeared. It's just freaking gone. It's weird. I like this stuff, though. It's fun. So a hiker posted uh, an Instagram story on Friday during the day, during the daylight hours. And he walked up to it, and he had a magnet. He put the magnet up to it. It did not stick, so he thought that it was probably aluminum. Mm -hmm. Uh, It appeared that it was not solid. He knocked on it, and it sounded hollow. And he said that it was like four riveted panels together yeah. so it wasn't a, a solid piece of metal um like many people thought maybe but there were several people there you could see as he kind of panned around yeah. people found people this people were location. finding out the location yeah. but it just it disappeared it's 10 feet tall you can't just like you would think there would be tracks or something from yeah. a vehicle that took this damn thing away oh, right it was put there by aliens and I, they came and picked it up i think it was but what were they looking for in the utah desert is there anything out there worth studying? I, don't know. I think it's very interesting. Uh, in other breaking news, wait, <laughs> wait, in other breaking news. No, no. Good evening, I'm Scott Wallace, and... We went bowling last <laughs> night. <laughs> you were on a roll there. It was sounding yeah. good. We went bowling last night. We did. Oh my god, Dale! I, I had been so a long time. I had so much fun. Yeah, it was so a lot of fun. I you didn't know this, but uh, when I found out that we we're going bowling with your family uh, to celebrate your dad's birthday, mm-hmm. your dad who passed away last Christmas Eve, mm-hmm. um, we decided because he bowling was his like, that fact. was his thing. Oh my God. He loved it. So that's what we did, uh, on his first birthday. Um, and I bought us bowling shoes. Yes. And they were great. They were great. They weren't were they? comfy. So no more rental bowling shoes for us. I love it. We have our own shoes. Love it. Love it. Love it. Now the next day I get this going to be. A thing now. We got to get our own ball. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. With the pressure of a ball. Yeah. You actually have to go and you have to get Sized. measured yeah, and, and you have, have to, to get drill the holes. Yeah. And someone walks you through the whole process. Oh, my God, Dale. Like I, was, I was bowling with, I, I was I playing a with 12 a, pound. I was playing with a 10. Oh, my God. I'm so lame. I think lame. it was 12. I'm so lame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I had so much fun. But here's the thing. It took me a game and a half before I even got my mojo on. Right. So when next time we go, we need to get there about an hour and a half before everyone else so yeah. I can warm up. Play a few games. Oh, my God. I didn't know that you were supposed to, like, <laughs> look at the pins. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I knew it. So, I mean, he's... You're supposed I, to look at the direction where you want to throw the ball. Yeah. And you follow we'd, through. We'd already played bo- about... We played three games total. We were probably halfway through the second game. And Dale's like, "What do you? where are you looking when you're throwing this ball? <laughs> I don't know what I was looking at. I don't know. And then I, I, I told I look- you... I think I was looking at the floor. Yeah. And I said, you know, look at where you want to throw the ball. Look at the head pin. Look at where you want the ball to go. And when I'd said that, what happened? I got a strike. You got a strike. Yeah. And then you fell on the floor like a I fell person. on the well. I did that for a dramatic effect, and <laughs> yeah, I wanted people to you know laugh at me and stuff. It worked. <laughs> yes, but in my first game, I got beat by a seventy-six-year-old woman. Yeah, <laughs> Dale's grand. She was on fire. Dale's grandmother literally beat me at first my first game. game. Yeah. yeah, she was pretty she good, was on and fire. she and she hadn't played in how many years? 
She had not played a game in her life. That was the first time she ever bowled. First time she'd ever bowled. And she still beat me. And yes. I and I took bowling in college. Well, I literally stupid. took I wouldn't bowling. tell people that. <laughs> it's a fun story. I, I got to be. It's a ridiculous story. <laughs> I got to be. Do you know uh this is a true story. When I when I was in college, I never got anything less than a B. Mm-hmm. Every single class I took, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, I got all the A's and B's. Never got less than a B. Nice. Pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah. It's amazing I wasn't (laughs) valedictorian. (laughs) Valedictorian. There's a site called Indy 100. Do you know what that means? What's this now? Valedictorian. The person who has the the most grades. No. No. What's the actual meaning of that word? With highest honor. Oh. Well, I did not graduate with highest honor. (laughs) That's for damn sure. (laughs) Ever. I've never gotten the highest honor in anything. Maybe masturbation. (laughs) I'm good at that. (laughs) Indie 100's top stories uh, this past weekend. This is a a site that uh, they put their stories. This is the Independence, the uh, newspaper in Mm -hmm. Britain, Mm -hmm. Great Britain. They put their, in the, on their Indy 100 website, they put the top stories in order as people like and read the most popular thing. Okay. That are, that are yeah. Most popular story this past weekend is, was about Vice President-elect Biden. And the, the <laughs> how do you say this? People want him to sign an executive order to return Taco Bell's canceled menu items that's hilarious that was the top story this past weekend so fuck the coronavirus <laughs> bring fuck, me back fuck the fact i don't that, even i don't even either that often to even know what was right i mean canceled. there's so many calamities in the world but people want their taco bell menu because it's what back. effects affects people immediately right the fast food chain came under fire by customers <clears> after <throat> it decided to cut more than a dozen items from their menu including potatoes all potatoes they're gone. And the Mexican pizza, was, which was very, very popular, it's gone. Well, you know what? If you think about it, a lot of these fast food restaurants' menus are way too big. They're way too big. And yeah. it's, it's becoming not fast food anymore. Well, apparently, you know, listen, Taco Bell's very smart, and they're one of the biggest chains in the world. They would not be cutting stuff if it was making money. Subway is the largest chain in the world. I, I said they're one of the <laughs> largest chains, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> but did you know that? Mark my words. Yes, and and I'm not a fan of Subway. I know because they have plastic. But in I think their that. Bread. But I think that surprises some people. That it is to know that Subway is the largest fast food chain in the world. Who had a pedophile as their spokesperson? Well, he's gone now. Uh, people also want Biden. Lost weight. <laughs> people also <laughs> want Biden to bring back McDonald's all day breakfast and Burger King's cheesy tots. I don't think President Biden. The president elect Biden will have that power. We have all day breakfast. No, they've limited it severely during the pandemic. Can't get everything all day. Well, you have to realize that some of the stuff might not be, they might not be able to get it. <laughs> Maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. You don't know. Although we're getting everything we want. We've been buying shit left and right. Yeah. And it gets here in two <clears throat> days. <laughs> <laughs> A bunch of junk. <laughs> Did you know, Dale, that you can customize your own Oreos? I did because you told me. Oreo Oreo cookies are one of the most popular cookies in America. And now you can go to their website to Oreo ID oh. and it will let <clears throat> you pick your cream color. It is one of my favorites. And have you tried the new Oreos that I bought recently? I don't know. What what, what, what kind of Oreos were they? Oreos covered in fudge. Um, I've had those. Sure. They're yummy. Yeah. We used to sell those at uh, with candy in Williamsburg, Virginia when There's I was a, a candy store worker. <laughs> There's only a few left. Do we literally have some in the there house There is some right upstairs now? right now. Oh, yes. Can we get some after the show? Yeah. All right. Anyway, the Oreo ID website lets you pick the color, the dips. You can put sprinkles on it. You can add a photo. You put sprinkles on it? And you can do custom text on the Oreo itself. We got to we gotta get some. These aren't cheap, Dale. Uh, no. For one Oreo, it will cost you $2.50. And there's a f- 20 minimum 20 count minimum so that's 20 cookies or 20 packs 20 cookies so you get is that one pack i, I don't know dale it's, or did they come individually wrapped they're individually wrapped so oh. 250 a cookie 20 minimum 
Uh, you can also get so about a, fifty bucks. Yeah, you can get a box set for. Um, I'm gonna get some a four, twelve, or twenty four. I'm gonna get binge bum ones, and I'm gonna have the center green like my logo. We can't afford that, Dale. I'm getting them. There are also tons of recipes and products on their website that I didn't know about. You can actually buy an Oreo scented candle for your house. Mm. Do you want your Do you want your living room to smell like Oreos? It wouldn't be bad. I wouldn't hate it. It'd be better than dog poop. <laughs> You know, I had two favorite cookies. Oreo, yeah, for sure. That's good with ice cream. That's but so I tell good. you, one thing that I haven't done in a long time, yeah, and both ingredients are upstairs, is the Chips of Hoy. Chips Ahoy, not of Hoy. Chips Ahoy. Chips of Hoy. <laughs> Chips Ahoy, yeah. original hard, crunchy cookies. Okay. And a tub of Cool Whip. What do you do with it? Dip it. Dip it. And eat it. All right. Is that, mm-hmm. that going to be our dinner tonight? I'm digging it. Oh, 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 who's that kid with the Oreo cookie licking up the creamy middle like she did when she was little? It's hard to hide the kid inside when you're crunching O-R-E-O. That was an Oreo commercial. Oh my god! Hey, that was an Oreo television commercial from the from 1980. Yeah, uh, you know some of those things. <laughs> watch your microphone there. It's. Do you remember that toy, Mister Bucket? Uh, we this we've talked about this on the show before. I know that's what it reminds me of yeah. all the time. Is I thought Mister Bucket's commercial song was dirty. It's Mister Bucket. The balls pop out of my mouth, and Mr. Bucket, that's what I'm all about. Wait, why was, it, why, was the, why was that 1980s Oreo commercial dirty? Because she said she licked it up the center like she did when she was a kid. Oh, let me hear, <laughs> oh wait, wait, let me hear it again. Oh, 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 who's that kid with the Oreo cookie? Licking up the creamy middle like she did when she was little. It's oh, to get damn. Dirty, right? O-R-E-O. Dirty. I guess so. That's that's so not. all you lesbians out there, please do me a favor. Oh my goodness! You listen to this song and you get down, and I want you to stop, <laughs> look up into her face, and, <laughs> just, stop. and just say O R E O. All right, I'm going to totally change change topics oh, here. It's hot down here. I'm so excited that we got um, our Nightmare Before Christmas Advent Calendar. And today we get to oh, open the first door. It's actually really cool. You should take a picture of that and put that on the thing. I because will. Because people need to realize how cool. It's really cool, guys. So this is a really cool. It looks like calendar. a big book, and you open it up, and this tree—it's like a pop-up book—and a tree pops up, and then there are twenty-four doors in the bottom of it, and you open a door each day, and there's an ornament inside, and you open it, and you put the ornament <clears> on the tree. And I assume the 25th is the crown? Ding, 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 ding. You mean the star? Do you know the if... The crown. Do you, do you know if our guests received their gift? Our guests received their gift. What guest? You sent one as a gift. Oh, I sent a. I sent one to my sister and mm-hmm. her family. Yes, they did receive it. And cool. she thought I was too extravagant and spent too much money. And I said, oh, it was it was a pittance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love this. We we have you to just tell her to be quiet and have fun. All right, just shut up and enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Take my gifts and love it. <laughs> oh, George Clooney. I love mm. George Clooney. I mean, he is one of the hottest older guys around, and he's really not that much older than me, but he's in his 50s, I guess. Old, yeah. Late 50s. Um, he was on CBS uh, Sunday, Sunday morning, morning, which we love with Jane Pauley. Jane yes. Pauley was not the host this weekend, but... Well, Charles Osgood was the OG. <laughs> he was one of them. Yeah, and Andy Rooney. Yeah. Okay. So, but but is that's Jane, a, wait. Is Jane Pauley number four? Is she's. She's. I think she might be number four. Four. Yeah. yeah. So Charles Osgood wasn't on there very long. It was uh, Charles Kuralt was on there for decades and decades. Who's but, Charles Osgood? <laughs> he's. Where do I know? Where did I get that name from? Oh, he's somebody. Charles Osgood. I just don't think he's a. I thought he was the previous. No, it was Charles. Okay, stop. (laughs) What I want to talk about is George Clooney talking about his hair. (laughs) So he's got very classic hair. Of course, when he was back on Roseanne and Facts of Life and and ER, he had dark hair. He now has very, very salt and pepper hair. It's more salt than pepper. 
Uh, but he told the uh, person who was interviewing him that he's been using a Flowbee for decades, for like 40 years, to cut his own hair, which has been making the rounds on social media in the last day and a half because it's so crazy. It is George crazy. Clooney, who has hundreds of millions of dollars in the bank, doesn't get his hair cut. He does it himself does with himself. a fucking Flowbee. Flowbee. It's basically that attachment that you hook to a vacuum cleaner. It's brilliant. Yeah. Because as it cuts your hair, it sucks up the hair, and so there's no mess. I love that. I love that. I like anything that sucks it up while I'm doing it. <laughs> Last week, we talked about Michael B. Jordan winning uh, or being named People's Sexiest Man Alive. Uh, we did a whole section on that, um, so you can go back and listen to that. But uh, in the wake of this win, he has decided, he and his barber. So Michael B. Jordan has a barber. Yeah. As uh, George Clooney does not. So Michael B. Jordan and his barber have decided to start an OnlyFans. <laughs> so usually OnlyFans, when I think of OnlyFans, is like for gay porn stars. So well, that you can go see. It's for anyone who wants to show more. Their dirty stuff. Just and they want for people the to gay pay. people. They want, oh, is it not just for gay people? No. Okay. It's for anybody. So if you want to get someone to pay you to get additional content. Right. Like your peen or something but there's, but there's also wise. a lot of negativity going around about celebrities joining this because he's not the first one. Oh, well, see, this is all new to me. Yeah. I, I thought it was just a gay porn thing. And there's a big uproar with the models, quote unquote, okay. of OnlyFans yeah. who are saying that these celebrities who are joining are taking away from to, them and to not do the content that maybe only fans was made for, but right. putting out other content like new music and right. stuff like this and that they're taken away and they don't need the money and blah, blah, blah and all this stuff. Well, so there's a big thing about it. People, people suck. I mean, listen, you, you, I could say the same thing about podcasts. Here we are, you and me, Dale and Scott, we're not celebrities, Yeah, but me, I'm not pissed off at Rob Lowe who has a top no. 10 podcast right now. I'm not pissed off at Jason Bateman, who has a top 10 podcast no. right now. And if you want to put your mustache on OnlyFans, go for it. All right. So that's what he's doing. He's uh, putting his mustache and his uh, facial hair on OnlyFans. <laughs> and if you, all the money that he makes from the subscription-based site will go to a school for barbers <laughs> who've been affected by the pandemic. So... And who hasn't been affected by the pandemic? I mean, are you willing? I mean, I'm going to ask you right now, here in front of all of our listeners in uh, Swish Edition land, do you think there should be a Dale and Scott OnlyFans site where we show them what we do behind the scenes? Absolutely not. No. You're not willing to get naked for a couple extra bucks? Who the hell is going to pay for it? We can barely get people to listen to this for free. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. You lick it up the baby. Like little. Oh, I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. You crunch in O R E O. This is gonna be our new theme song. She licked it up the middle like she did when she was little. It's so dirty and so great at the same time. Oh God. She right. licked it up the middle like she did when she was little. All right, we got movie news. Uh, <laughs> tell me about this. It's official now. Mads. How old is this person in this commercial to where that she said that she licked it up the middle like she did when she was little? She must be. It was Dinah Shore. Oh. Uh, do you remember Dinah Shore? <laughs> that, 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 is, that is perfect. That is fucking perfect. Dinah Shore was in the, this commercial. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, that makes everything better now. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's official. <laughs> Mads Mikkelsen, who uh, was Freaking a lesbian, was on a, a Oreo commercial. Stop! I'm going on to the next section. Do you think the, you think Nabis Nabisco knew that? I I don't. Is Oreo Nabisco? I I, I want to know. Wait. I want to know if they knew Donna Shore was a lesbian. Are you saying Di no? Di Diana Shore was not necessarily a lesbian, but she was a lesbian icon. They took over. With when they did the the golf tournament, they kind of basically made her their their icon. I don't know that she was. I think she was married and had kids and stuff. She was half black, which was kind of controversial for her. You time. gotta send this to Karen. You gotta find the video of this and just send it to Karen and tell her to listen to the lyrics carefully. All right, I will. 
We'll do that. All right, moving on. Moving on. It's official <laughs> Mads Mikkelsen, who was a wonderful, wonderful villain in uh, the Casino Royale. Uh, Daniel Craig's first James Bond movie. Mm -hmm. uh, he is going to be the new uh, villain in um, what the hell is the name of the movie? Deal. Uh, they fired Johnny Depp. You know, it's the spinoff of uh, Harry Potter and all that. Anyway, uh, he is taking over for Johnny Depp in those movies. We've talked about it on the show a couple times. Yeah, I, I wonderful beast, wonderful beast. It. Yeah, that's it. So that's breaking news this week. Also, uh, Dale loves trains. You do like trains, right? <laughs> Don't you sure. like trains? Sure. I think it's the best mode of transportation in the entire world. Yeah, we just I think I think we mentioned it last week. You said the same thing. Um so I thought you would like this. Brad Pitt will be uh making a new thriller called Bullet Train based on a Japanese novel. Uh plot de plot details are vague at this point, but we believe it might have something to do with Brad Pitt and a bullet train. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, last week we talked about Fandango, Fandango polling a uh, thousand people to figure out what their favorite Thanksgiving movies are. Now we're going to talk about what they thought their favorite Christmas movies are. But here <clears throat> are their favorite unconventional Christmas movies, which are the best ones. Which are the best ones? So number one came in, obviously, Die Hard. We were yeah. just talking about this before we came down to the studio. Uh, we're definitely taking it with us to uh, Christmas so we can show it to our family. Yeah. They've seen it. <laughs> yes. They, oh, they know it more than we do. Uh, Edward, I like I like this second one because yeah. I never I never thought of it. And yeah, I would agree. Yeah, Edward Scissorhands came yeah. in at number two. Gremlins. You actually posted this question on BingeBomb.com. Yeah. Is Gremlins a Christmas movie? The majority said yes. It came in at number three. Bad Mom's Christmas is number four. I got to tell Perfect you, movie. I've seen that maybe four or five times. It's friggin' love it, funny. Love it, love it, love it. Christine <clears throat> Baranski makes a great villain in that. Yes. Bad Santa, which I've actually not seen. What? I've not seen Bad oh, Santa. It's actually not bad. It's pretty good. That's the one where the kid keeps wanting to make him sandwiches. <laughs> I don't know. It's funny. It's not funny if you don't yeah. know what I'm talking about. Uh, Krampus. <laughs> Came in at number That's five. That's the horror Halloween. We have. It I on, mean, Christmas. We literally have it on DVD. I, yeah. I don't, do we even have a DVD player? I, I don't I've, know. No. I've seen bits and pieces of Krampus, but I have not yeah. followed through with it. Office Christmas Party. Perfect. I watched <laughs> Perfect. it last night. Yeah. Or yesterday. Uh, the night before. What is that? That's the one with... Um, <sighs> I want to say it's Michael B. Jordan, yeah. Seth Rogen, and... JPL. JPL. JGL. Joseph Gordon Lovett. Hmm. I'm you not going to. No idea. I have no idea, but uh, we're just. I have to pee. So just. I'll have to edit this. Dun, 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 dun. She licked it in the middle like she did when she was. <laughs> Oh my god, that is so funny. <laughs> she looked it in the middle like she did when she was <laughs> Oh god, it's hot in here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, so much pee came out of me. I didn't think it was ever going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cut that out. All right, so another movie, Trading Places. Does that have a Christmas movie thing I, to it? I don't even know what that is. I haven't seen it in years. It's <clears throat> Oh, it's great. It's um, Eddie Murphy and uh, Dan Aykroyd. Um, and then Anna and the Apocalypse, which I've never heard in my entire life. I would have to look it up to figure yeah. out what that is. I don't know what that is. Uh, then they also asked about favorite m holiday movie villains. Mm -hmm. And this is fun because when we played bowling, played, yes, played bowling, played bowling, your sister came to bowling with a t-shirt, the that perfect had, shirt that had the wet bandits on yes. it. Yes. It was Harry it was and like Marv. A it was like a wanted shirt with the wet bandits. With Harry and Marv uh, so, so I have from a, Home Alone. I have a trivia question for you. Okay. So they were known as the wet bandits in yes. Home Alone 1. Yes. What were their names in Home Alone 2? The Sticky Bandits. Oh! <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 
that kid with the Oreo cookie. She, she looked in the middle, middle like, like she did when she was little. little. It's hard to hide the kid inside when you're crunching O-R-E-O. Uh, number two favorite holiday movie villain was Hans Gruber <laughs> from Die Hard. Uh, third was Mr. Potter from It's a Wonderful Life, which I do not like. Mm. Uh, the Grinch from the Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas came in at number four. And then Oogie Boogie was Oogie number five Oogie. from The Nightmare Before Christmas. So that's kind of fun. Yeah. Speaking of holiday movies, uh, I don't know if you know this, but between the streaming platforms, which... Dale's all about and the cable and broadcast networks there are some hundred 100 new Christmas movies this season let me tell you there are so <clears throat> freaking many yeah so freaking many Hallmark but the thing is it's yeah. it's got to be a huge money maker oh it's well they would not make them if they weren't Hallmark has 40 new offerings this year is alone. it not true that Hallmark has a Hallmark Christmas channel 365 I don't know Oh, do they have a separate channel just for that? Not Hallmark or Lifetime. It's either Hallmark or Lifetime that has a 24, 365 Christmas channel. Well, anyway, Hallmark is releasing 40 new holiday movies this year. Lifetime is releasing 30. So between the two of them, they got, you know, they pretty much got in most of them. But some what? of the other networks and cable stuff you, are doing them too. And you watch one, you've seen them yeah, all. Yeah, and that's right. <laughs> and that's what I wanted to say is that you know the damn story. I can sit there and I'm watching one of these Hallmark movies and I know exactly what's happening next. Yeah. Uh, we were watching a show last night, I think it was, and I like, it's funny that you kind I kind of like anticipate what the characters are going to say next and I like say it in my head and then they say it. It's kind of like, I guess that's because I'm a writer. I don't know. I don't know. I just, <laughs> I, I want things to be unpredictable. Mm. Unpredictable. So, speaking of binge bomb and streaming stuff, you've got your new holiday gate. Uh, holiday gate. <laughs> wow. Your new holiday wow. holiday guide. Wow. Yes, With I all do. of the streaming stuff. I'm trying to keep up, and it's not easy. Yeah, because <clears throat> there's so much of it. Yeah. That's right at bingebomb.com. Bingebomb.com, and there's a uh, link right in the top menu. Now, forewarn you. This is for streaming platforms only originals. Yeah. Um, there is a couple of old school stuff. Sure. Like Peanuts, because that's on Apple TV Plus and it's their first year. So this is mostly original movies. Yeah. And the thing that we haven't seen yet, which is out, uh -huh. that we liked so much last year, is yeah. The Christmas Chronicles 2. <gasps> Oh, I can't wait with Goldie Hawn and yes. Kurt Russell. She has a bigger role in it this year. I love Kurt Russell. And my understanding is that the girl, the sister, remember the brother and sister? Yes. Um, so the brother is not in this one. It's the sister now, I okay. believe, the who is the kind of the main kid in this Got it. version. Well, but Goldie Hawn plays a bigger part. Mrs. Claus plays a good. bigger part. Well, I thought that Kurt Russell made an amazing Santa Claus. Oh, it was it was a great yeah. movie. It was a 2000, uh, 2018 is when that one came out. Yeah. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, you gotta watch, watch, watch it. the first one. It's really really it's good. So great. Yeah. And do you have a giveaway <laughs> on Binge Bomb coming up? Coming up. Coming up. We'll talk about it next week. Yeah, I'm yeah. putting together a twelve days giveaway. Ding ding a ding 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 a ding 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 a ding 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 a ding. She licked it up the middle like she did when she was little. I'm not going to press it again. <laughs> I already played it four times. Hey, Dale, did you know that there are more video entertainment options now than ever before? It takes a Herculean effort just to keep up with it all. Oh, I know, Scott. There's so many great things to watch these days, and the list is growing every week. That's why I created BingeBum.com. BingeBomb.com? What's that? Well, it's both a comprehensive website and a weekly subscription digest delivered right to your email inbox every Friday. And the best part, it's totally free. Free, you say? Hey, that sounds affordable. How do I sign up? Hey, you just navigate your way to bingebum.com and sign up. It takes seconds, but it'll save you countless hours trying to figure out what to watch on the likes of Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Hulu, Peacock, Apple TV+, HBO Max, and more. B-I-N-G-E. 
B U M. Is that it? Hey, you know how to spell. That's correct. Bingebum.com. It's got the latest news, trailers, release dates, and more about your favorite streaming platforms. We even have a weekly theme watch list, too, featuring classic movies, documentaries, and TV shows that are streaming right now. Wow. You know, people say F2020, but there has never been more great content to binge on our TVs. I'm totally going to sign up today, so I'll know what to watch this weekend. Good for you, and you all should sign up too. Just head to bingebum.com. I'm going to get my binge on, Dale. You better if you know what's good for you and for your TV. Uh, (laughs) Jeopardy returned to production yesterday um, after the death of a beloved host, Alex Trebek. Uh, They've got Ken Jennings in. He was the super winner. Of yeah. all winners. Uh, he's only an interim host, though, Dale, because, uh, as we've said before, Jennings has several other things going on, so he probably will not be the permanent host. You know what? I I, I, I would not want to be, like, an executive producer of Jeopardy right now because be they're a in a pickle. De- it's a tough decision. Because I think any decision you make is going to be a wrong one. Right. Right? I think. Is you- there any one? Although I did like your choice, the space guy. The science guy. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Tyson, yeah. I think he would be a really good one. I think he would be really cool. Yeah. Um, so no 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 decision on the permanent host yet. However, originally we told you on this show that uh Alex Trebek's last show would be Christmas, December twenty right. fifth. That has now been changed. They've decided to air ten of Trebek's best episodes during the weeks of December twenty first and December twenty eighth. So Trebek's final week of episodes will now air the week of January 4th. And then the ones with Ken Jennings will start up on January 11th. Yeah. So there you go. If you want to watch Trebek's last show, you need to get your ass <laughs> watching TV the week of January 4th. So four, five, six, <clears throat> seven, eight. So I guess January 8th probably would be yeah. his last, last, last. Maybe they just needed time. some time to yeah. get this interim thing I, I wouldn't want to be them. They're in a pickle. Yeah. Brand new brand new news out yesterday. Uh, Felicity Huffman, who uh, was convicted of in that college admission scandal and went to jail for two and a half minutes. Uh, she will headline a new baseball-themed television sitcom for ABC. You know I do like her. Yeah. I love her, too. She's a great actress. Uh, single camera comedy, which I like better yes. than three cameras. She uh, will play a widow who inherits a minor league baseball franchise. So, new show. Nice. For Felicity Huffman. Apparently, she was much sought after because of all of her news of being a bad, bad, bad girl. <laughs> bad mother. <laughs> Lots of different companies wanted her, and ABC won. Well, that's good. Yeah. That, that is, does, is this like a turning point for cancel culture? Maybe. Let's Great. let's stop canceling people, <clears throat> right? Because they're bad. She did her time. She I paid mean, her fine. She did if her. If you want to do literally the did her culture time. thing, everyone's not without their demons. So that means no one would be working at this right. point. Well, there's certain people that can't be redeemed, like Harvey Weinstein. And uh, that's a pretty horrible man. Yeah. No, he I can't. Get, he can't I get come that. back. I get that. Matt Lauer. He was pretty gross. Yeah. He probably can't come back. But Felicity Huffman, I'll take her. Yeah, I'll take her. Yeah, I'll even take the pedo from. Subway. <laughs> oh, who's that kid with the Oreo cookie? Not the cream in the middle, like she did when she was little. God, I love it. God, I love it. O-R-E-O. Oh, that makes me so happy. Yeah, we've got a, I've got a spoiler alert. Spoiler I gotta, alert. I got to find out how to download that to my phone. Many people are talking about... <laughs> The Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Now you, oh, this had to be big news. You and I are huge Mandalorian fans, and this yes. is a spoiler alert. So if you guys have not watched the most recent episode of The Mandalorian, yeah. you probably want to this, mute, mute the next three or four minutes of What the happened show. this last episode means you really can not wait to watch these shows. Yeah. You have to watch them when they debut. L- listen to this, and then we'll talk about it. Grogu and I can feel each other's thoughts. Grogu? Yes, that's his name. Grogu. He was raised at the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. So uh, the child, the child has a name. His name is Grogu, and he makes the most incredibly cute sounds. 
Yes. When his name is said. When his name is like a dog. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's like a dog when you say his name. It's just so his fucking ears cute. perk up. Let me tell you, this show gives me all the feels. I love it. And this most recent episode uh, starred Rosario Dawson, who is dating uh, that senator from New Jersey. What's his name? The black guy who Chris was... Chris Christie. <laughs> <laughs> no! No, not Chris Christie. Oh, my God, that's funny. That is funny. What are you doing right now? Uh, You're texting somebody. No, I'm not texting. I'm trying to figure out who I'm talking about. It's Cory Booker. Cory Booker, thank you. I knew you were talking. Oh, you were just trying to be funny? Yes. (laughs) So, Rosario Rosario Dawson was awesome in this episode. Oh, God, that's funny. It was really funny. There's a lot of funnies this show. And for the first time... Yoda's name was mentioned yes. in this episode. Yes. So we've c- kind of gone back to the Star Wars, you know. This the, was a huge episode. The canon of yeah. Star Wars, right? It was really huge. So if you guys aren't watching it, I don't know why you're not, because it's just such oh a God. fucking I mean, great show. Even, every single episode is movie, movie quality. Every episode is a individual movie. It and is. you almost don't need to even have watched any of the rest of it to enjoy it. No. But I this, was never a huge Star Wars fan, but I am right. loving this. I am loving this. But, sadly, uh, there was a death in the Star Wars family this week. Uh, David Prowse, who uh, was the original Darth Vader actor, he was in the costume. He was not the voice. As we know, James Earl Jones is the famous voice. And as, as far right. as I know, at press time, James Earl Jones is still alive. <laughs> uh, but ap- apparently, David Prowse died of COVID-19. Oh, no. At 85 years old. Which is very sad. Yeah. Uh, Lucasfilm praised uh, him in an in Instagram post yesterday saying he was the commanding presence and imposing physical presence of Darth Vader. Yeah. And really, if you go back and look at the clips, he really was Darth Vader, although he was completely covered up and you didn't know that it was this man, he had a presence and he mo- the way he moved yeah. and the way he, it was pretty amazing. Yeah. So keep losing them we lost uh carrie fisher princess leia we've lost uh, uh so many of them so it's not good uh so we want to finish up the show by talking about <laughs> see we got our disco music <laughs> not the oreo boots and pants i didn't boots press and the oreo boots button and pants and boots and pants. we got to talk about the show we always end the show usually with what we're watching what dale yeah. and i are watching right. and right now we're watching the flight, flight attendant, attendant on hbo max gotta tell you guys if you're a fan of the big bang theory and kaylee no you can't say that you, no. if you're a fan of kaylee cuoco yeah because this has nothing to do with big bang theory no I, but but if you like her yeah you'll love this yeah and if you like uh thrillers and uh, dark comedies yes you guys will love this yeah and I was not feeling it the first episode, but two and three, I'm in it. You got I'm in it for it. the long haul now. So we watched the, the first three episodes. The fourth one comes out this Thursday. Every Thursday. Yeah. Yes. So check it out, y'all. Uh, the first couple HBO are HBO Max. If you guys don't have HBO or you're not a subscriber, get it. What are you waiting for? They give so much great content. Did I tell people last time that you can watch the first episode at HBOMax.com? For free. Free For slash free. free something. Yeah. You can oh, find okay. Just Google it. I like that a lot. Yeah. You should watch it. It's really fun. And the the opening credits, which it's is about... really, really cool. It's very cool. It's very 1960-ish, vintage, kind very, of funky. Very flat. Love it. Artwork, and it's cool. Yeah. Uh, it's a good show. So check it out. I can't wait till Thursday. Yay! So this is our first episode of December. We're going to have an episode every single uh, week. Uh, we got some giveaways coming later on in the month, which we're excited about some from some major movie studios. Oh, oh, oh. We, got some gi- we got some giveaways coming from <clears throat> bingebum.com. And hey, if I get my shit together, maybe we can have a giveaway from swishedition.com. How about a new, a new Swish Edition logo t-shirt? Yeah. Our, I like it. It's our third logo since yeah. we've been doing the show. Let's get out of here so I can order me some Oreos now. <laughs> Bye.
This, my friends, is the Swish Edition. You're not willing to get naked for a couple extra bucks? Who the hell is going to pay for it? We can barely get people to listen to this for free.